the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's the University Church as we gather on this Monday Thursday to enter into Christ's passion. As Christ gathered his disciples and gave them a meal to remember him by, so we share in this Eucharist, remembering the new commandment that Christ gave his disciples to love one another as he had loved them when he washed their feet. At the conclusion of this service, we then watch with Christ in the garden as his arrest, trial, and death lie ahead. But as we gather tonight in worship, we give thanks and acknowledge Christ's presence among us. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm.
Let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God, our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, In the holy name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From the seventh verse of the 13th chapter of John. You do not know what I am doing now, but later you will understand. What do we not know? 
What do we not see or understand about Jesus' actions with the Twelve this night? His lowly washing of their feet on the eve of his betrayal. Tonight we come to the hour of crisis, the crisis of glory. Now is the final gathering of the Twelve, the final feasting and feeding, the final humility that will lead to clanking of armor and of torches in a garden across the Kidron Valley, a final salutation, a recognition, a binding, and a hauling away. We have spent the Holy Week with our Lord, watching the storm clouds gather, and in that upper room we see unfolding before our eyes the full burst of divine glory, the form of the servant manifested to his disciples, the self-emptying that just is incarnation and redemption. As we watch this tableau, it seems as though everything about this lowly act of foot washing should be entirely plain to the apostles, plain to us. He is enacted as who he is. The Lord becomes servant. Gathered back at the table, dressed now in his mantle, and holding once again commanding place as teacher, rabbi, Lord, Christ himself tells us just what he has done. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asks. You call me master and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. Then if I, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. You are to do as I have done for you. We are told that it is a special blessing, a makarism, to know this truth. For a servant is not greater than one's master. It seems, then, that our Lord has told us plainly all that we need to know. Our greatest happiness is to follow our teacher into the depths, to strip off the outer husk of our lives, to kneel before one another, to bathe, to wipe clean, to stoop down, to serve. That this is a hard saying our entire lives testify to. We are so slow to serve, so stiff in our movements down, so wooden and unpliant in our bending, our raising others up. But surely we understand all this. From our youth upward, we know the example and the steep climb of our imitation. So what do we still lack? What do we still not know? Perhaps we are like the builders who have not reckoned the cost of the house, the king who has not faced the exorbitant price of battle. We are they who have not taken full measure of the cost of humility. Perhaps that is what we do not understand. It is true, after all, that we cannot imagine nor calculate the cost of humility in our earnest lives of striving. We see only as far as the dream world of lowliness to bend down to serve the ones we consider worthy of service. Perhaps they are our intimates the ones we have already drawn into the inner fastness of our lives. Perhaps we can imagine serving them, placing them before self. Or perhaps we dream of service we pretend is altruistic, 
the poor and neglected, we might think, those we recognize on the margins of our proud societies, perhaps because we placed them there. Perhaps we daydream of grander service to country, say, or to university and learned societies, to the international courts and diplomatic causes, to the church. These, too, demand much of us, perhaps our whole. And, of course, they thrive only because many will pursue such vocation. But our Lord has set us an example far more costly, far more radical than any of these acts of service that we conjure in our dreaming state. Our Lord washes the feet of those who will deny him thrice and who will lead soldiers to the garden retreat to capture, to flog, to mock, to hang until dead. These chosen few will desert him. Only the beloved disciple from the inner circle remains at the foot of the cross, as John recounts the day. These are the ones Christ kneels before, a towel like a winding sheet wrapped around his loins. Perhaps when we took up our baptism, we did not know it would be like this. We would be called upon to bend low to the ones who hate us, to the traitors of our kind, our class, our cause, ourselves. Perhaps we did not dream that we would stoop low in the company of those who embarrass us, the unworthy. Perhaps they are the elites of our lands, so easy to revile them. Perhaps they are the powerful and crafty, the successful, the mean-hearted, the proud. Perhaps it is humiliating to stand in their company, to be caught washing their feet. Perhaps our companions find us alienated, self-alienating, the very acme of resentment Nietzsche taught us to loathe. Christians who follow their Lord and Master into this dark night are unreliable partisans, for they serve not only the destitute and broken, but the proud and the self-serving and the enemy of our cause. We cannot understand this, and though it is commanded with a promise attached, blessed are they who do such, we recoil at the example, example of such radical self-giving. And it may be, too, that we do not understand what our Lord does this night, but later in the fullness of time, we will. But just when is this later time to arrive, to work its elixir on our understanding? Is it at the hour of death, when the young prince of glory dies? Is it then we understand the washing of one another's feet? Or is it in the garden, once again, at first light, when we hear our name on the risen Lord's lips? Do we understand humility then, when death has been well served and utterly overcome? Or is it the end time, the consummation of all things, when at last the seals are broken and the silence spreads out in heaven and the Lord of lowliness takes up his throne and reigns? Will we understand in that eschatological hour what foot washing means and how it has served the kingdom of our God? There is an apocalyptic note in the fourth gospel, a yearning forward to another time, to a distant country, 
though it is not prominent as it is in the Synoptic Gospels. It lies beneath the great flow of words and deeds that is the passion sequence in John. But it is a steady press forward, a later that drives forward to the final glory that is Christ in majesty. It may well be that our vocation to humility and its radical cost can be revealed to us only when all things have been made captive to our Lord Christ and his true glory manifested to all eyes. If that is so, we have every reason to watch with unveiled eyes as our Lord stoops down to us, his chosen, his deniers and betrayers. We are bathed in his nocturnal light this Monday Thursday, caught up in his loving lowliness, astonished at the mystery of his utter self-giving to us and to the whole created realm. True enough it is that we cannot comprehend it now. Though we know our happiness lies there, it is indeed a world turned upside down. What we expect of a proper life, an orderly and respectable one, seems shaken to its core this night. Yet it is our souls and the world's deliverance. So in faith we affirm that later, in the Lord's own good time, we will understand. And until that hour, we love, we bend down, we wash, and we do not count the cost. That is our Lord's example, and we gaze on it with astonished and with thankful hearts this night. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, that are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. Give us the humility to love and serve others after his example. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one, as you and the Father are one. Unite your church in every land, and give us grace to love those whose faith and fervour we struggle to recognise, that we may see your gifts in all your children. Lord, hear us. Lord, On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved and for all who are persecuted for their beliefs. Grant us the courage of our convictions when hardship and disappointment weary us. Lord, hear us. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Welcome all your children into paradise, where you have prepared a place for them, and make their joy complete. Lord, hear us. Lord, in fellowship with Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your unfailing love, saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he guarded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption, for you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. <laughs> 